What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into the J Mo Copper podcast. I'm so happy that you are here. If it's your first time listening, here's your extra, extra mercy. If it's not your first time, here oh, is yes. your extra, extra mercy. I appreciate everyone who keeps oh, yes. listening. Please remember, guys. Please subscribe if it's on YouTube, but also please uh, share the links and rate the podcast on Apple Podcasts uh, and on Spotify. Let people know that you're listening. Uh, make a review, and I'd appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. I just want you guys also to know um, that. That we have a conference coming up like i've said before on the 15th of march to the 20th of march 2021 there's the jayma copper podcast um, conference and we're celebrating the fact that the podcast is turning one years old so i have a lot of my uh, dear and near friends who are going to be sharing powerful people uh, who are going to be blessing you all on instagram so please make sure you're there it's a conference it's all online and i'm believing it's going to bless you before we get into the message i need to give out some extra mercives so i need to give an extra mercive to kitumeti shakwane here's your extra mercive and also basitana tesa slash tepang here is your extra mercive thank you so much guys for uh, just shouting out the podcast on social media i appreciate it and other people are finding out about the podcast through people like you so i appreciate you guys so guys we have been talking about um love stories in this series and you know yesterday not yesterday the last podcast we spoke about how we need to we need help how we need help in order to protect the promises and even the answered prayers that God gives us. But today, we're going to be speaking about um, the emotional trap, okay? You know, one thing that will sometimes stop you and prevent you from being all who God's called you to be, it's not necessarily the spiritual things, but sometimes it's purely in the er in the area of your emotions. So I want us to pray today and trust that God's going to speak to you um, through this podcast. So let us pray today. God, we come before you and we thank you so much for who you are. I pray, Lord, that you would help us uh, just to hear your word today and to learn lessons from people in the Bible uh, and just to see, oh God, how emotions can trap us uh, and how we are to be living lives beyond how we feel. And I uh, pray, Lord, may this word just completely impact us and, and bring us to a place where we are closer to you, but also we are challenged um, to be more like you uh, and to love you more. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we all said, amen, amen, and amen. So the emotional trap. One thing you have to know is that your emotions can either serve you or they can work against you. And often for a lot of believers, like maybe you're listening to me right now, you may recognize that in some places in your life, your emotions have sabotaged you because how you have felt has caused you to behave in certain ways that God has not called you to behave in. Your emotions have caused you to think certain things. Your emotions have caused you to behave in certain ways. And today I want us to take a look at the emotional trap in how Jacob found his love interest so how jacob found love basically jacob is the son of isaac so we're sort of connecting the stories uh, from last pod the last podcast um if you haven't listened to the last podcast what's going on with how i'm speaking today <laughs> uh, but if you haven't listened to the last podcast the last episode i want to encourage you to listen to that and then listen to this so we're going to pick up from um what we learned from isaac and rebecca now we're going to be looking at jacob and uh rachel and leah okay now what we are seeing in the story is uh jacob and rebecca had sort of found a way to um to steal the birthright of esau so isaac had a son called esau and and jacob and jacob stole the birthright of his older brother so he runs away as he's running away god comes to him in a vision and now begins to let him know that even though you are a cheat god comes to him and says i still have a plan for you and even though you're behaving this way that I've not called you to behave, I still have a plan for you. And this is just before we getting into the message, I just want to say that to you. I don't know how you have been labeling yourself. You know, sometimes we do label ourselves. We say things about ourselves or sometimes it's our family who said things about us and we just have these labels. I just want to encourage you one more time. Do not move by the labels that man have given you, but move by what God has called you. You see, uh, what Jacob had just walked out of doing is stealing. He was a thief and a crook, but God still had a greater plan over his life. So what happens is um, 
because he's running away from Esau and Esau is upset because Jacob stole his birthright. He goes to Laban's house. So I just want us to read what God spoke over Jacob's life in the book of Genesis chapter 28, verse 13 to 14. It says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you, your offspring shall all the families of earth be blessed. Come on, what a word that did God just give give um what a word was that that god just gave to jacob what an amazing word that even though you have just done something so wrong something so evil something to stab your own family in the back i still have a plan for you come on guys god has a plan for you god has a plan for your life now now let's check this out um now as Jacob is going to Laban's house. He's, he's looking for safety because of what he's just done. He goes there. He finds himself um, going and, and walking into the land where his mother told him to go. And as he gets there, he sees this, these different uh, shepherds who are, you know, getting prepared to water their sheep. So he gets there and he asks, hey, guys, do you know where Laban is? Do you guys know Laban? They say, yeah, we know Laban. And he says, how's Laban? Laban is good. And as a matter of fact, his daughter is coming. So now... What happens is when Rachel comes, Rachel, the Bible says, let's go to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 29, verse 9. I'm seeing a word that maybe I didn't pay attention to, uh, and I never hear people say this word. But Genesis 29, verse 9, it says, While he was speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. I've never heard anyone say a shepherdess in my life. (laughs) But maybe you're like me and I just expose something new to you. Welcome to the J. Mokopa podcast. But Genesis chapter 29 verse 9, it says she was a shepherdess. She was coming in. She was just living her life. She was basically doing her profession, doing her responsibilities, doing what was in front of her and being faithful with it. And what happens is Jacob walks looking for help, living his life as well, following what his mother told him to do. And they collide. Now, this is what happens the emotional traps begin to fall into place. Now, many people read this this story and they like to paint it in this emotional, um, even a romantic way of looking at the story. But I want to expose some emotional traps that Jacob fell into. And I'm praying that as you were listening to what he did, that you would not do the same. But what we see in Genesis chapter 29, verse 10, is as soon as he gets into the situation, As soon as he gets to where he is and he sees Rachel, what happens is Genesis chapter 29, verse 10. It says, Now as soon as Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, um, Jacob came near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And then the Bible says in the next verse, it says, Then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud. Jacob kissed Rachel and wept wept aloud. Now, when you are in a emotional trap, when emotions have trapped you, what you're going to find yourself doing, number one, that we see with Jacob, is emotions will put you in pursuit before you see fruit. You see, what we see with the servant that Abraham sent in order to find a wife for Isaac, as we learned in the last episode, the servant, what he does is he prays to God and he says, God, I am looking for a woman who will show me fruit in her life. He was looking for a woman who would not just give water to the servant, but give water to the camels that he had, right? So what we see with Jacob is because emotions have come over him, he doesn't stop to see what type of a woman is Rachel. What type of a family is she from? What type of a man is Laban? Instead, emotions put him into pursuit before seeing the fruit. Can someone say amen today? Can someone say amen today? The Bible says in the book of John chapter 15 verse 8, it says, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. So you prove to be my disciples. You see, when you've fallen into an emotional trap, you'll find yourself chasing people, chasing things, chasing careers, chasing opportunities before even seeing the fruit. 
you will be in pursuit before seeing the fruit. And as we are going to go forward, we will see that this thing cost Jacob. He got too excited. And I want to speak this warning over your life and say, don't be too excited just because you are feeling something. Just because something feels good or even just because something feels bad. Just because you are angry. Just because you are emotional about something. It could be a good emotion or a bad emotion. Don't pursue action too quickly. As a matter of fact, we need to learn to pray and to bring things before God and then say, God, let me see proof. Before I say I love someone, let me see proof of the fruit. Before you say this opportunity is good, let you see. You must see fruit that it is good. It must be proven to you. You see, even scripture says that you must prove that you are a disciple. So, so an emotional trap will make you pursue before you see fruit. That's number one. That's point number one. The emotional trap will make you pursue, will put you in pursuit before you see fruit. Number two, when you've fallen into an emotional trap, the outside outshines. That's point number two. The outside outshines. So let's look in the book of Genesis chapter 29 verse 17. Actually, just let's, let's rewind to Genesis chapter 29 verse 11. The Bible says that Jacob kissed Rachel and he cried. Listen, I don't know what was going on there, but that was an extra immersive kiss. I mean, really, that was another. Uh, he gave her a lamza. I'm talking about le lam, le, le, le okay? <laughs> Gives her a kiss and he cries. I mean, listen, ladies, uh, on your wedding day, when they say, I do, ne? I've never seen a man cry, but if you will make your man cry, when you say I do, you may kiss the bride, record it so we can play it on the J. Makopo podcast. Hallelujah. But okay, point number two, like I said, the emotional, the emotional, the emotional, the emotional trap, it'll make the outside, the outside outshine. So Genesis chapter 29, verse seven, it says, Leah's eyes were weak. Now, what happened is Jacob went to Laban's house and he was working for Laban. And then Laban says, you can't be working for me like, like all this time and you're not getting anything. What do you want? So Jacob says, I want Rachel. I want Rachel. So the Bible says, um, Leah's eyes in, in Genesis chapter 29 verse 17, it says, Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. <laughs> it says, oh, let me read that one more time for those at the back. Um, Genesis 29 verse 17, it says, Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. So Laban said, what do you want? Jacob wanted a wife. Jacob wanted a wife. Okay. He wanted a woman. And when he looks at the two daughters, Leah's eyes are weak and she's older. And then he sees Rachel. She's beautiful in form. The Bible in other versions, it says she had a beautiful figure. Listen, I don't know what was going on if Rachel was a slender summer catalog or I, I i don't know if if rachel maybe you know she was she, she, she was representing pakistan i'm talking about uh, I, I'm, I'm saying i don't know what figure this is talking about but it made the young man jacob dizzy it made him dizzy when you are caught in an emotional trap, the outside will outshine. You see, even when you are angry, how things look is going to make you more angry. How, how things look will make you more depressed. How things look or how a person looks will make you say, oh, this person is good. The outside of the situation, the outside of the opportunity, the outside is going to outshine everything else. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on the appearance or on the height of his or his stature, because I have rejected him. It says, For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. You see, when you are in an emotional trap, you're going to be caught up in the appearance of a thing. You see, even some students will, will say, okay, look, um, I want to go to this university because it looks good. I, I, I want this job because it looks good. I want this. I want that because what? 
it looks good. The Bible says God does not look at the appearance of a thing. God looks at the heart. It's so important that you are not moved by the appearance of a situation. I'm talking about emotional traps, not just in emotions or in dating. Generally, I mean, with emotional situations, because life it carries emotions, Make sure that you are not caught up in the appearance of it, but make sure you are caught up in the heart of it. There are so many people who have decided to go to universities and th those universities have damaged them. There are so many people who have been in relationships because it looked good and those relationships have damaged them. There are so many people who went into a job situation because the job looked good, but at the end of the day, it damaged them. An emotional trap will make the outside outshine. Let's remember, guys. It should not be about the outside. When we look at the story of Isaac, how Isaac found uh, Rebecca, the servant was looking for a woman who what, who had a character, who had generosity. He was looking for something on the inside, not the outside. Yes, Rebecca was beautiful, but when they were looking for a wife, they were looking for a woman who, who has a characteristic about her, not that she was beautiful on the outside. Don't be moved by the outside. Don't let the outside outshine. Don't be moved by the surface, guys. That will always put you at the back foot. That will always harm you. So Jacob is looking at her because she's beautiful. He is neglecting Leah because she is older and she doesn't have a good eyesight. He is basing all of this on the outside. Come on, guys. This is terrible. And this is actually something that I want to say to you as a believer. It's so sad, guys, that how as Christians we have found ourselves so shallow. We have found ourselves as believers so shallow that our prerequisites or our types are exactly as the world. We are, not, we are no different. We do not go deeper and, and we do not seek spiritual things in the people who we say we want to be interested in, the outside outshines the inside. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying I, I pray that God would give you wisdom in making your decisions. But I'm just touching on that. It, it's so sad how, how shallow we've been and, and we need to do better as believers. But let's get into the, into the last thing, the last point. It says, um, when you are caught into an emotional trap, I want to tell you one thing that we see with Jacob is you will become numb to dumb. You will become numb to dumb. Genesis chapter 29, verse 18 to 20. It says, Jacob loved Rachel and he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than to anyone else. And he says, so you can stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed to him but a few days because he had love for her. Now, now, like I said, when you have fallen into an emotional trap, your emotions are going to make you numb to dumb decisions. You see, dumb is not an emotion. And emotions can switch off your rationality and your logical thinking. God just spoke to Jacob and said, I'm going to use your life and I'm going to bless many generations through your life and through your family. Just now, a chapter ago, God says this to you. Now, what does Jacob do because of emotions? He now begins to chase a woman for seven years. Now, the scary thing, many people see this verse and they say, oh, so, so emotional. No, 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 no. This is dumb. Jacob pursued Rachel for seven years and it felt like days to him. But I want to tell you one thing. Years are not days. Look, I pray you are catching this. Years are not days. His love made him unaware how much time is passing by. His emotions made him so unaware that he's wasting time here. 
You see, the promise that came over Jacob, it was not attached to a woman. It was over his life. But instead of seeking the God who has spoken over his life, instead of building the vision that God has established and called over his life, he's chasing a woman for seven years and his emotion is making him blind to the fact that he's being foolish. And he spent seven years pursuing Rachel. And the Bible even says, you see, because he didn't take time to stop and see the fruit, he was in pursuit before he saw the fruit, he then even attaches himself to Laban. He should have waited to see what type of a family is Rachel from to see maybe this is just a family I'm meant to get to but not connect to. Because when he connected to the family, what happened was, Laban cheated him. After the seven years, Laban gives him Leah, the, the, the daughter he didn't want. And Laban then says, okay, I can't give you Rachel because Leah must be married first. The older daughter must be married first. So work another seven years for Rachel. So what does Jacob then do? He's a numb to dumb because he's in an emotional state. He's in an emotional trap. He can't see that, you know what? Maybe I should disconnect from this family. I should disconnect from this man. I should disconnect from this place because this is throwing me down instead what does he do he goes back to serve a seven years he works for another seven years that's 14 years then the bible says after the 14 years what does jacob do he works another seven years for laban he was dumb he was dumb but he was numb to dumb because he was in an emotional trap you see your emotions are gonna switch off your logical thinking guys don't let your emotions lead you come on guys don't fall into an emotional trap because you will be numb to dumb. You will be numb to the fact that you are wasting time. Guys, we can't be chasing people. We need to be chasing after our God. You can't be chasing the approval of a man. You should be chasing the approval of God. The what is over your life is over your life regardless of who comes in and who leaves your life. So it's so important that you are chasing the things that are leading you towards the vision that God has put over your life. That are leading you towards the calling that God has put over your life. Not chasing people. Jacob was chasing people. He was numb to dumb. He was numb to the fact that he is behaving dumb. I want to say the gracious thing about our God, the thing that is of grace over our God, I mean about our God and what he does in our lives, is that the word that was spoken over Jacob, it, it still was unshaken even though he was unwise. Even though he fell into an, an, an emotional trap, even though he fell into an emotional trap, the word that God spoke over Jacob was still the same. Guys, I want to speak to you today and say, God has spoken things over your life and it's in his word. He wants to use you. Number one, the number one calling over your life is to know God. But the second big calling over your life is to make other people know God. Now, I want to say this to you today and just, and just remind you and just remind you that even if maybe your emotions have led you to the left and to the right, even if your emotions maybe have caused you to make some bad decisions, I want to say that the word of God is still true and it is still over your life and you can always repent and come back to God. You see, one thing about our God is that he secures the purpose over your life. But your job is to secure the people over your life. You see, because Jacob made all these emotional decisions he had a secure purpose but he invited insecure people into his life as you as you keep reading the story he married uh, Rachel and Leah and what we see is their insecurities begin to show they begin to compete with one another in terms of giving birth and that puts what God had called over Jacob's life at jeopardy because he made emotional decisions by bringing these women into his life and now there is turmoil and there's drama don't be moved by your emotions this year we need to be moved by our faith i want to ask you today what areas in your life have you allowed emotions to be king what areas in your life have you allowed your emotions to lead you i want to tell you 
that if you continue to do that, you will be trapped. If you continue to allow your emotions to direct you, to make you angry, to make you depressed, to make you low and just feel like you have no passion anymore, you will never be able to fully accomplish what God has called you to do. But this word is coming to you to say, don't fall into the emotional trap. Don't fall into the, the trap of emotions. Your emotions are there to serve you and you not to serve them. You are called to serve your God and you are called to speak to your emotions. I want to speak to you today and say, you speak to your emotions and you command them to honor your God in and out of season. Let's say a prayer today. Father, I come before you, I give you praise. Father, we are in this, this, this series of um, love stories. I pray, help us to not let emotions trap us. Even if it's a good emotion, even if it is love, even if it is uh, positive things, God, may they not trap us, but instead may we be attracted to purpose. May we, may we be attracted to seeking you and giving you praise with all our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we all said amen today. Come on, we all said amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to the JMO Copper Podcast. I'm, again, very grateful that you were here. Like I said, but at the end of each uh, episode this month for this uh, series, I am going to be giving relationship or dating advice for the queens. I want to say this. Um, Genesis chapter 29 verse 9. It says, while he was still speaking to them, Rachel came with her father's sheep for she was a shepherdess. So she had a job. She had purpose. She had direction. And as she was, she had a title over her life. She was a shepherdess when she found, when um, I should say Jacob found her. Don't be caught up with looking for a man. Be focused on your life. Be a shepherdess. Have a title. Have a vision. And as you keep seeking what God has called you to do, the man who God's called you to be with will find you. The right people will find you. Be a shepherdess. She was not looking for a man, but the man came and found her. Have something to offer. Have something to offer as a woman. Have something besides your beauty, besides how you look, besides your body, have something to offer. All right. For the kings, for the kings, I want to say this. When it comes to dating and when you're looking for a woman and you want to pursue a girl, if it takes too long to get her, forget her. If it takes too long to get her, forget her. We're going to look at the two. Rebecca. When Rebecca, the pursuit of Rebecca was happening, it was easy. Let's re read the Bible for yourself. It was an easy journey to pursue her. I'm not saying it's easy to get her, but it's easy to, to pursue her. So when you are seeking out a girl and you want to talk to a girl, make sure you are only giving attention to a girl who is making it easy to pursue her, not a woman who is making it hard to pursue her. You can't be, you are a man of God. You should be spending your energy seeking the things of God and building the vision God's put over your life, not chasing after a girl. That's advice for you. But for both kings and queens, this is the last thing. It is never let a feeling get in the way of God's leading. Never let a feeling get in the way of God's leading. I don't care how good it feels or how bad it feels, whether it is anger, whether it's good, whether it's emotions, attraction to a young brother or young sister, never let a feeling get in the way of God's leading. If God's leading you in a direction, but your feeling is going that way, go with where God is leading because where God's leading is what's best for you. In the name of Jesus, we all said amen. I pray that all of these things are helping you guys. Take care. Thank you for listening to the JMO Copper podcast. Please rate it, review it, share it with all your loved ones and even the haters. Remember, there is a conference coming up. It's all going to be on Instagram. Please look out for my Instagram for all the information and details. Take care, guys. God is love. Peace out.